Hello. In celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission this year, I'd like to pay special attention to how the achievements of our past are relevant to our future. We are an organization that coordinates and facilitates marine science in order to provide services and products that can be used, for example, to help coastal communities protect themselves from marine hazards such as tsunamis and storm surges. We work to bring the best scientific knowledge of the ocean into the decision-making process in management, policy, and international law. We help maintain oceanographic databases so that they are accessible to scientists around the world. And we help coordinate, on a global scale, research projects that are providing detailed understanding of how the ocean and marine ecosystems are changing. In the past, we took a bit of a different tactic. Leading up to the foundation of IOC in 1960, oceanographers around the world were seeing amazing developments in their field. Deep water circulation patterns in western boundary currents that had been predicted years earlier were now possible to measure directly using floats that emitted acoustic signals, which a ship would then track. In 1955, engineers in Australia invented the first in situ instrument capable of measuring conductivity, temperature, and depth in real time. The CTD, as it is called, is now a standard tool for determining ocean salinity and density. However, Many advances in the field stemmed from the work of small teams or individuals pursuing a new idea. Government support for marine science had also tended to focus on projects of national interest or on collaborations between countries with common regional marine resources such as the North Atlantic or the Baltic Sea. The exception to both came with the International Geophysical Year of 1957-58 during which 67 countries participated in a coordinated study of the earth sciences, including oceanography. Following the success of the IGY, a small group of leaders in the field of marine science from 40 nations agreed that for oceanography to develop as globally as the ocean in terms of its connections and importance to life on earth, the science had to become global as well. The Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission launched its first mission in 1960 with the International Indian Ocean Expedition. This five-year systematic survey of the region examined the physical, chemical, biological, and geological properties of the Indian Ocean and conducted meteorological surveys of the region's unique monsoons to learn how the changing winds affect the properties of the ocean. The goal at the time was to better understand the complex and dynamic interplays that determine how the ocean functions as a whole and how it connects with the rest of the earth. By tackling a region from various points of view, they could share in a better understanding of not just a specific region, but also how that region fits into the larger puzzle. The IOC provided an intergovernmental platform for the development of marine science, establishing marine research oceanic surveys, and assistance to underdeveloped countries and priorities. This strategy remains a core emphasis of the IOC today, but now we have even greater awareness of the need to generate societal benefit. Today, we focus on obtaining understanding of the ocean in order to provide knowledge for policy decisions, projections of climate change, ecosystem services, coastal management, disaster reduction, and the sustainability of living marine resources. Science is a pursuit of knowledge, but the learning comes from interactions with other people. The process of peer review is not to judge, but to provide a platform for sharing opinions and expanding perspectives. Collaborating with scientists who have an expertise in one part of the ocean on a project that takes place halfway around the world promotes opportunity for understanding what are common and what are variant aspects of ocean properties. Only by being interconnected ourselves can we succeed in finding the links that connect the different regions of the ocean as one. This is what we can learn from the past as we move toward the future. Though we've shifted the purpose of our role in facilitating collaboration from improving fundamental knowledge base about how the ocean operates to that of using the power of that knowledge for such purposes as coastal protection, sustainable development, and stewardship of our ocean and marine resources, 
It is imperative that we remember we are not working to save one part of the ocean at a time. Now more than ever, we must stop and remind ourselves of the lessons we learned from the past. We work better with the benefit of different perspectives. Our regional and local efforts have global consequences. Only through our collaborations can we pioneer ways to, in to invest in our future, find new methods of utilizing the data for the benefit of all, and ensure global monitoring of the ocean continues so that the services and products that are protecting our communities continue as well. This is our time to celebrate the international successes we have achieved in facilitating scientific progress in oceanography and to double our efforts to facilitate best practices for how that understanding is used.